Now I'm not exactly what you guys on here would call a park ranger, but it's basically the equivalent in the country that I live. I have a couple of stories for you today. Now the first is actually from my childhood, one from when I was younger than I am now. My father really liked to go out on adventures with myself and my brother, and he always planned really cool stuff for us to do. One of these trips involved us going out into the woods and going out camping together. Now this was really interesting for us, and we'd never been out in the snow before like this, so of course it would bring new challenges, but it would also bring some new adventure. My other brother at the time didn't bother accompanying us, so it was just me and my dad, but I didn't mind it that way. Sometimes I find that my brother can be a bit self-indulged and only really listen or talk about himself and not really give you good advice back. It's quite annoying because I always seem to give him the bestest advice that I possibly could, but that didn't matter, at least not on this trip. Now we basically plan to go out into the woods for a good couple of days camping and hiking along the way, and this was brilliant for me as I love to go outdoors. Now we drove up to the area that we needed and we set out. We were following the main path and had a designated site that we were going to go camping in. My dad did this for safety reasons as of course his son was with him and he didn't want to be too far away from everyone. When we set out, the snow was no longer falling but there was a lot of snow around and snow on the trees so that just meant you had to be a little bit careful when you were walking because it wasn't always clear whether the ground was kind of like a dry snow or a wet snow and if it's sort of soggy you can easily get your shoes wet and you have to pretty much head back if that happens. So being relatively careful we set out. At first we're walking through some relatively low bushes and quite big trees, they're kind of like the tall skinny kind if you know what I mean. They're basically really beautiful, and I'm really having a good time on the first part of my adventure with my dad. I absolutely love to go on trips like this with my father, he's really one of my best friends so I was having a great time. The trees eventually become more dense and some of the snow is falling off of the trees and hitting us on the head, and it's a little bit annoying because you have to keep brushing your hat just to try and keep dry. But it's fine and again adds to some of the adventure. Now we hike for quite a while and eventually make it out to the spot that we're going to camp in. The snow is actually picked up a little bit and my dad sets to work and he made me help with the tent, not only to learn the importance of it but also because it's important for staying warm. Now one thing I was really looking forward to and my dad especially was the night sky. We were going to see some beautiful stars out here because we're far away from most populations and miles away from worrying about light pollution. It's something I hadn't really experienced before living in a populated city, so this was a treat. We eventually get up the tent and go inside for a while, and my dad then starts a fire. It doesn't take him too long because he has all the appropriate equipment with him but he's very cautious to make sure the fire's going nice and strong. He has plenty of firewood around, so this is really good and I know it's going to be more than enough to keep us warm. The fire eventually melts some of the snow around where we are and it makes it very warm, so I'm really grateful for this. We sit there talking about different stories and my dad said, hey, look up at the stars, you never know if you're going to see a shooting star. And unfortunately I didn't see any that night, but that's no worries whatsoever. I'm just really glad to be out here and have some bonding time with my father. So the first night goes as planned and everything's good, and we actually have a small heater in the tent so we're really warm and toasty. We wake up the next day and everything's as normal. We set out where we're going to hike a little bit further for the day and see some of the views that are around. And this place is really beautiful. The hills kind of look a bit mountainy, and again, it's something that's a relatively new experience for me, so I'm really excited to see it all. So, we set out further and further and get to a point where my dad says that we need to head back just in case we get lost, and I completely understood. 
Now while there, my dad can hear what sounds like a wolf hailing. It seems to be a lone one, but it really frightens my dad. Seeing my father scared actually scares me a lot too. He said, son, we better head back. He didn't have to explain to me why it was, and I was pretty glad to be heading back now. I didn't actually hear too much, to be honest, at the time of the wolves. It was more my dad picked up on it, and I guess I kind of know this, but not really. But it was pretty creepy. So, we continue our hike and eventually make it back to the camp, and my dad once again gets a fire going. We cook some food over the fire and again we're just having a really good time basically and we decide that we're going to head in for the night. Now throughout the night we can definitely hear some kind of animal howling. Now I know this might sound weird but I really don't know what animal this was. I realised too my dad seemed relatively unsure of exactly what this was and again it kind of worried me. I was very worried about wolves coming to get me even though that realistically it's quite unlikely that it would ever happen. Especially not with the way that we're armed, but I don't know. It's just something kind of creepy that you don't really experience often in life unless you're in those kind of situations where you're in the middle of nowhere like that. So anyway, we ended up falling asleep after not too long and waking up again in the night to realise that the fire's been put out. That's really odd, my dad says. Did you leave any water around? I say no, of course not. And my dad looks a little bit worried and confused. We definitely had the fire going and more than enough wood in it, but it seems to have gone out almost. It looks like somebody's done it on purpose, but we're pretty sure this is some kind of accident and maybe I left water next to it that got knocked over. Not to worry. We head out again for another day of adventuring. Now on this particular day, we did some more hiking and sightseeing, and we actually tried to do some ice fishing which I can tell you was pretty unsuccessful. So we start heading back to the tent on the way home. As we get back to the tent, it's pretty much the same thing again. We basically put everything away and get the fire going, cook some food then set a whim for the night. Now I'm awoken at some point in the night, confused as to why I can see my dad outside. I can just about see the silhouette that's portraying a shadow onto the tent. I don't think much of it and fall asleep again thinking maybe my dad's just went out to use the toilet or maybe he's worried about the fire. The following morning I woke up and I said to my dad, Dad, what were you doing last night? He says what do you mean? I wasn't doing anything. I say, yeah, what were you doing to the fire outside? And now suddenly my dad looks really concerned. He looks at me and says, no son, I've been here the whole time. What happened? And I explain what happened and he seems somewhat worried. He says, son, it was probably just something in your imagination, so try not to worry about it too much, but worry me it did. I don't really see my dad too scared often, but there was definitely something off. I had certainly seen somebody the previous night. I don't know, maybe it's just where I wasn't used to being out there and I was a little bit uncomfortable and I was just imagining things. But this was pretty creepy to say the very least. So anyway, we set out once again and everything's as normal like usual. As we set out, we have basically come into one of our last days and we're just having a normal conversation as usual. While we're there, we stop and we can see somebody up on the bridge line just further away from where we are. It's quite hard to see but they seem to have a really large brownie colour coat on which is really odd. We wave and say hello but there's no reply. My dad seems to get a little bit concerned at this and tells me that we need to head back now. So, a little bit bored now, we're just sitting there with the fire going, making food, not really saying anything. And my dad seems more worried than before. He says he's going to investigate something and not to worry, and I say okay, and wait for my dad to return four or five minutes later, which he does. I say, dad, what happened? And he says nothing, just get ready for sleep. My dad gets the fire going even stronger, and we settle in for the night. We fall asleep and wake up the next morning to realise that the fires went out once again. 
definitely by water which is really bizarre. It can't have possibly been from the snow or the trees because there wasn't much around there, especially not in the spot that we're in, but how did it go out? This is really bizarre. Now we get our things together and head out for the final day's adventure. We once again go to do some lake fishing and really want to try and get some fish this time because it's something I haven't really experienced many other times and I've never caught anything fishing and my dad loves fishing so he keeps on and on going on about it but I tell him how boring it can be but he will not listen. His father also did fishing too so that's definitely why he liked it so much. So we surprisingly actually catch one single tiny fish and I joked to my dad about it, but he's eager for us to get it back to our campsite and put it on the fire. And that's exactly what we do. So we make it all the way back again, and we start the fire, and everything's as normal. We eat the fish, then we decide that we should just start heading home the next morning, earlier than usual because we're both a bit bored now, which is completely fine. As we're sitting there, just roasting some food over the fire, we can see a strange figure once again, just off in the distance. It's a silhouette of a person wearing some kind of coat which kind of looks like a very dark colour against the background, but this is basically just because of how dark it is now. Now the stars look absolutely beautiful at this point, but they're not really casting enough light down on us for us to be able to see well. But it's definitely a person there. I joked to my dad saying it's probably a snowman but my dad doesn't really seem to be in the mood for jokes. He then says hey and shouts out hey again and waves but there's no reply. That's when my dad says that he's going to investigate a little bit and I trail slowly behind him. We can see whatever this figure is holding up some kind of stick to the sky. Now what's really weird in this moment is we both realise the clothes that this person's wearing. The clothes do not look like somebody that's from the 21st century. They look very primitive and all of his clothes are from some kind of animal hides. And how he wasn't cold I'll never know because we were cold enough with our new high tech gear on but this was really weird. It looked like somebody coming from a fancy dress or costume shop if you guys call it that. But why would he be out here like this? Again, we called out but we don't get any reply whatsoever and we probably get about 40 or so feet from him and we can see that this is a much older man just staring at us still holding up some kind of stick into the air. That's when my dad turns around and says son, you know what to do and I did. I didn't need any further instructions as we start trudging back through the snow again. My dad's holding my hand and he won't take his eyes off of this person. He says, son, do not take your eyes off of him. If he moves one inch, tell me. And I start to panic a little bit and start putting everything away. I eventually do so, and that figure is still there, having only moved very slightly. We get everything together and I tell my dad, and he says it's time to go. My dad doesn't even bother putting out the fire, and we start the slow trek back with only our torches to guide us. Luckily there's enough light on the ground from the snow illuminated for us to be able to see where we're going and we start the trek back. While walking I keep looking over periodically and that guy is still there barely moving until eventually he turns away into the woods. This makes us pick up our pace a little bit because we can't really see what direction he's going in. And I kid you not, we can hear the sounds of wolves once again. My dad still has his lights on because he thinks it's probably going to scare the wolves a bit and he has his weapon ready. Luckily we make it back to the car and everything's uneventful at this point. We quickly get into the car, wait for a good 5 or 10 minutes which has got to be the most terrifying part while he's able to get the engine going and the car ready to drive. During these moments my dad tells me, please tell me if you see anything son, and I promise him, and we have the doors locked. My dad still has his weapon in hand at this point, and thank god the car comes to life. 
My dad slowly turns it round and gets the car onto the road, and we start making the way back home. I say, Dad, Dad, what did you see? And my dad tells me, whatever he saw was definitely not a person. He then reveals to me that when he went off earlier in the day and before he had seen the exact same figure that looked terribly dated and out of place for the situation they are in. He said it almost looks like he's bumped into some kind of time traveller or we've bumped into them. We are both very scared by this experience and my dad made me promise that I wouldn't say anything to my mum because he knew that she would never let us out there again. Now, we never did go back to there ever again afterwards. Looking back on it now and speaking to him more recently, he's revealed to me how scared he was at the time, and that he didn't want to show me how scared he was at the time, but he was really feeling it. Now, I'm certain we bumped into some kind of weird spirit there that we weren't really supposed to see, and we were trespassing on their land and they were not happy about it. It still remains one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Now, I've always thought I had some kind of connection with the paranormal, whether I wanted it or not, and one of those actually come from being on site during my job. Now, as part of my job, I had to go every so often to check out some environmental thing. I won't bore you with the details, but I had to check markers at certain points. Mind you, this is well into my adult life, so I wasn't as scared being out in the forest or parts of it, relatively isolated from others. I always had the help of the other people working the same job as me, but it would take them a while to get there. But luckily we had our radios to stay in contact with each other, and this always made me feel a lot more safe than not. Now, I was on my way to one of these specific markers, and as I'm walking, I stopped dead in my tracks. Just in the misty October air above where I'm standing, I can see some people over the hill. Now once again, this is just like what happened when I was younger with my dad, so I had some paranoia from it, and I decided it would be best for me to stay outside and not necessarily investigate immediately. I quickly come off of the main road that I'm on, and face away from the sun and quickly go into the woods a bit. I stand so that I'm parallel with one of the trees, and just sort of out of sight. I wait for a good four minutes and nothing happens, but something was telling me do not move, and wait and see what happens, and that was just what I did. After another good five or ten minutes of this, I eventually see more figures coming up the road. They get closer and closer, and they seem to be armed, causing me to duck down a little bit. Because of the mist, I can't really see exactly who they are, or what they're wearing, but they eventually come closer and closer, and I think maybe there's some people lost from a party, because they're carrying some kind of big swords, and have weird shaped helmets on them, and long beards. They get a little bit closer, and I can see that what they're wearing is armour, and animal clothing. I immediately have flashbacks to what me and my father saw that time. I then realise these look like warriors from a prehistoric time. But the strangest part is, I can't see anything below their knees. It's almost like they're hovering through the ground, which is the strangest part. At first I'm convinced that maybe this is just from the mist and it's kind of obstructing them, but then I realise it's not the case. Literally, it's like they're walking through the ground, which makes me realise these aren't real people. There's probably about seven or eight of them in total, and they don't take notice of me because where I am, and my god, I'm too scared to make it known. I wait for a couple of seconds and look around, just to see if there's any others I have to worry about. Now, they're in absolute silence at this point. I turn back, and they've vanished literally like they didn't exist in the first place. Now the craziest thing about this is there would have been no possible way they could have hidden in that time. So I know something was definitely up. Now after this experience, I immediately went back home and told my dad after my shift what had happened. I didn't tell any of the other workers initially because I didn't want them to think I was off my head, but my dad said, son, where was this? 
and I explained the exact location, and he then revealed to me something that I couldn't believe. The path that I was standing on was once a medieval road that was discovered not too long ago and was buried about two or so feet beneath the path that had been laid more recently. So that would have made perfect sense as to why I couldn't see from their knees below, which is exactly what I saw. I think that maybe I have some kind of connection to the spiritual world, where I can see moments in time that others can't. Now I haven't told any of my colleagues about what happened in this story per se because, you know, I can't really be bothered with too many questions. If this had have happened and my dad didn't tell me that about the road before, I wouldn't have really questioned it, but knowing this, I can only possibly believe that it was paranormal.